first free session of big data and Hadoop training. Let's see the agenda for the day. So guys, we are going to discuss firstly just one slide for the introduction to Dataflare web services. After that we'll see what is big data. We are going to discuss about each and every aspects of big data. We'll discuss about four V's of big data. Then after that we'll talk about conventional approaches and problems associated with it. Then we'll start with what is Hadoop? Hadoop the solution of big data. We'll discuss Hadoop in great details. Then we'll be having an introduction to HDFS and MapReduce. After that guys the most important session that is use cases. There we are going to discuss real life use cases of big data and Hadoop. We'll discuss Hadoop ecosystem. We'll discuss career prospects in Hadoop. Then We'll talk about Hadoop and Big Data Expert course. So guys, for today's session, your questions will be taken at the end. But in actual session, you can talk to me like uh, I'm talking. You can uh, ping me. You can stop me at any point of time. But due to large audience, today's, for today's session, please hold your question till the end. About Dataflare Web Services. So guys, Dataflare Web Services is a big data startup where our mission is to provide big data solution to the business. We also provide training on cutting edge technologies which are latestly evolved like big data, Hadoop, HBase that is NoSQL database, Kafka, Storm, Spark, Cassandra and apart from that some BI tools as well like SAP BI, SAP HANA, Jaspersoft, Microsoft BI etc. Our other services include placement and consultancy services where we help the candidates, where we help two companies for the staffing. Introduction to big data. Guys, big data, the biggest buzzword of the industry. Big data, the biggest buzzword of the industry. Big data is booming like anything. So later point of see time when we'll see the future of big data there we'll discuss about at what speed big data is growing at what speed big data is growing we'll discuss in great details if I give you a very simple definition of big data so guys big data is all about finding the needle of values in a haystack of structured semi structured and unstructured data. So guys, big data helps the business in taking the decision. Guys, the main core idea, the main reason behind big data is helping the business in taking a decision, in taking right decision at right point of time. That's why guys, the most suitable definition I would say is all about finding the needle of values in his take of data. Now guys, structured data, all of us understand very well. Like data that is in the form of rows and columns. The data that we can store in RDBMS. That is structured data, pretty simple, we understand that. Second form of data is semi-structured data. Semi-structured data, it means like few of the uh, fields are missing or it is in a specific de defined format like Excels, like XMLs, like JSONs, all of this comes under semi-structured data. By the way guys, uh, JSON and uh, XMLs are pretty standard. N number of different sources are generating the data in the form of either JSON or XMLs. Now, the third form of data that is unstructured data. Guys, unstructured data is the biggest source of data biggest its its contribution is the highest in the volumes unstructured data means like simply a free form of text like a paragraph in front of a screen like this image in front of a screen like multimedia audio video all these data comes under unstructured data let's see the 
definition of big data from big players like Gartner, like IBM. So guys, Gartner defines big data. Guys, it's a little important. Gartner defines big data not only as volume, but as high volume, velocity, and variety. So guys, there are three V's. Volume, velocity, and variety. So big data define, Gartner defines big data as high volume, velocity, and variety information assets that demands cost-effective, innovative form of solutions for enhanced insights and decision-making. Guys, it, it's really important for enhanced insights and decision-making. Why we are getting all these volumes? Volume, we understand huge volumes, data in the range of petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes. Velocity, speed at which the data is getting generated. Variety, all the forms of data. Like structured, semi-structured, unstructured and many forms in the unstructured. According to IBM, according to IBM, 80% of the data captured today is unstructured. Guys, very big figure, very, very important number here. 80% of the data captured today is unstructured. Now guys, we are aware, we are pretty much aware that our conventional technologies like RDBMS if I take the example RDBMS can't handle unstructured data RDBMS can't handle unstructured data guys out of 100 gigs 80 gigs is unstructured so we need we need a innovative form of solution to handle this unstructured data because guys in this unstructured data also we are having huge information gold mines of information available so where from where we are getting the this unstructured data like from from sensors used to gather the climate information post to social media sites digital pictures videos even your purchase transaction records, cell phone GPS signals, all this unstructured data is also big data. This is also a big data. Okay, now guys, let's talk about, let's talk about big sources of big data just to give you a glimpse how much data is getting generated how much data is getting processed just few small figures that I'm giving you 2.9 million emails are sent every second 2.9 million huge if I give you the example of Google Google processes Google processes 24 petabytes of data per day 24 petabytes of data per day we tweet 50 millions of tweets per day. 50 millions. Total time spent on Facebook each month is 700 billion. 700 billion. That's huge. If I take the last example that is data uh, that is the uh, number of products ordered on Amazon per second. It's 72.9 items per second. 72.9 items per second. That's really huge. Just to give you a complete glimpse about big data, how exactly it looks like, where exactly from where it is generating, and especially big players like Google, like Twitter, like Facebook, how much data they are generating. Now, if we talk about evolution of big data guys even we'll start with the evolution of data from where the data started from where the visualization of data started the word data was incepted from where it was early 1970s it was early 1970s where the prime 
the source of data was primitive and structured just few bytes of information was generated at that time and mostly the mainframes was the basic source of data basic data storage with relational era which started between 80s and 90s which started between 80s and 90s guys we got complex relations public uh, this pri uh, primary keys foreign keys all such type of complex relationships came into the picture relational databases data intensive applications came into the picture these solutions were very good RDBMS was very good till 2005 till 2005 guys after that people started facing issues with this what are those issues like limited storage capacity RDBMS can't handle my data RDBMS is very slow I have seen people are taking days even weeks to process their data I'll give you example in use cases that's why guys the requirement of big data started and from early 2000s only we started getting varieties of data structured semi structured unstructured we started getting tons of data and and the volumes are very huge variety are very different and velocity is also very fast of this data due to the introduction of social media due to the introduction introduction of n number of, especially as soon as the this internet there was a revolution in the internet then we started getting huge volumes of data guys there is exponential growth in data let me show you that again few important figures data explosion every day guys very important point every day we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data 2.5 quintillion bytes according to IBM this figure came from IBM after a big research so much that 90 percent of the data in the world was created in just last two years it's very huge how guys from the inception of the data from the inception of the data from early 70s or even before till 2013 the data generated is contributing merely 10 percent is contributing merely 10 percent and from 2013 to 15 it's contributing 90 percent if we talk about overall digital universe so guys if you see the data volume y-axis and uh, time at x-axis this graph the data is growing at exponential rate data is growing at exponential rate now guys we have reached to a place where there is a big gap between what was expected this was actually expected that with time data will be here but actually data is at the top that is in the exponential manner there is a big gap between our ability to process data and actual data this is the big data this is the place where big data technologies should come into the market and solve all big data problem that's why we are discussing this big data firstly the big data that is the name of a problem that we are getting huge volumes now let's talk about few examples of big data generation from big players like Walmart the giant of retail industry Walmart is having 200 million weekly customers across 10,700 stores in 27 countries Walmart is having 1.5 million customer transactions every hour guys it's really very huge 1.5 million customer transactions just about their transaction data 
three petabytes of data are stored in Walmart Hadoop cluster. Just one type of data, guys. I'm giving this information. R rest of all the data is totally different. Later point of time, I'll give you even very small retailer as compared to Walmart. That's Sears. I'll give you its example. Then you'll be surprised that how much volume they are generating and how much time they are needing with the conventional technologies and how big data Hadoop solve their problems. Let's talk about Facebook. Everybody is on Facebook. Everybody uses social media. Guys, there is 4.5 billion Facebook likes every day. 350 million photos are uploaded on daily basis. There are 250 billion photos stored by Facebook. Guys, if any one of you have observed that profile pic, say for example, you open your Facebook, you logged in Facebook, you open your Facebook wall and and when you see, when you look at that, if suppose uh, you, you are opening at peak hours, the profile pic of your friends is getting loaded very fastly as compared to the pics he has shared. As compared to the images he has shared, the profile picture is loading very fastly. How many of you have observed that? Then I'll give you the exact reason why your profile pics are getting loaded very fastly. Okay, almost all of you have observed that. That's really great. Guys, the reason is that your profile pics are stored on HBase on the top of Hadoop. HBase is a family member of Hadoop. Hadoop it's in a Hadoop ecosystem. HBase is a NoSQL database. Your, even your messaging, your uh, uh, the chatting is also on the top of Hadoop and uh, its ecosystem. That's Hive. So guys, 10 billion messages are sent every day and there are 1 trillion posts in Facebook's graph search database that's really an extreme case the volumes that is uh, that Facebook is handling and at the lightning fast speed at lightning fast speed we are getting such data such response now guys I'll give you one, one, one small question just uh, after this information if I give you just a small information, one Boeing plane engine generates 20 TB of data, 20 TB of data for every hour of flying. The question is, how much data do all the flights in this world generate every year? The question is, how much data do all the flights in this world generates every year if there are 100,000 two engine flights daily? Guys, you can imagine just a rough guess. Just a rough guess, guys. I'm expecting from your side. Just to give you a glimpse that uh, volumes, what could be the volumes, what could be the range. I'm getting the answers. I'm getting the answers in the range of uh, petabytes few hundreds petabytes So guys, let me show you the answer. The answer is 6,000 exabytes. The answer is 6 million petabytes. That's really huge.
काफी यूज सिक्स थाउजेंड एक्साबाइट और सिक्स मिलियन पेटाबाइट गाइज जस्ट गिविंग यू ग्लिम्स दैट दिस मच वॉल्यूम ऑफ डेटा इज जनरेट एंड वी आर अवेयर अबाउट रिसेंट इन दी इंसिडेंट इन दी फ्लाइट दिस वॉट हैपन दिस मिस एप्स वॉट हैपन विद दिस मलेशियन एयरलाइन uh with this um, air asia flight and all air industries this airline industries are planning to collect this volumes in real time in real time they are planning to collect this data and they will process this data in real time okay now guys let's talk about let's talk about the four v's of big data let's talk about four v's of big data first v volume the most important v 40 zettabytes of data will be created by 2020 guys 40 zettabytes means 43 trillion gigabytes 43 trillion gbs of data will be there on our planet by 2020 most of the companies in us have at least 100 tbs of data so guys currently 6 billion people have the cell phones and world population is 7 billion huge volumes of data is getting generated all of us understands volume very well i think volume a uh, pretty easy dimension to understand now next dimension is velocity next dimension is velocity second v of big data velocity is very important if i give you guys one example okay before that let me again uh, give you the definition of velocity the speed at which the data is generated but gartner has added one more line with this that the speed at which we process the data should be equals to the speed at which the data is getting generated important point we must have our capabilities we must have processing speed that much fast that we can process all the data in real time if i give you guys one example right millions of credit card transactions are going on in real time we need to identify fraudulent cases whether a transaction is fraudulent or not guys okay let me ask all of you how much time do we need to do a transaction how much time just say for example uh, we supply our credentials as soon as we supply our credentials how much time it takes to authenticate ourselves correct hardly 2 seconds 3 seconds extreme 4 5 seconds during this time we need to collect the data we need to authenticate the user we need to authenticate the user whether he is a correct person authenticated person or not and and another important point here is we need to send this data to our analytic system where this data will be analyzed for the fraud cases like i'll give you an example of the same also at 9 am i am doing a credit card transaction from mumbai at 9 am i am doing a transaction from mumbai and from the same credit card from the same credit card there is a transaction request at 9 am 2 minutes just 2 minutes later from delhi there is something wrong this transaction must be stopped there are various cases like usually we do transactions in inr now suddenly a request in dollars usually our network location is say specific location i am in mumbai circle suddenly there is a request from chennai circle or even outside india from new york all such cases must be handled So guys if i give you one more figure the new york stock exchange captures 1 tb of trade information during each trading session 
guys just in a trading session one terabytes of trade information and one in, uh, one information one record is merely of in the range of uh, bytes not even it ranges to kbs you can imagine the records that we are generating the volumes that we are generating so i am having uh, this credit card fraud detection case even in use case section also there also we'll discuss the same in great details as of 2011 the global size of data in healthcare was estimated to be 150 exabytes guys just in healthcare till 2011 it's 150 exabytes or 161 billion gigabytes let me give you one more example 30 billion pieces of content are shared on Facebook every month again really huge 40 million tweets are sent by 200 million customers 200 million active users per day 4 billion plus hours of videos are watched on YouTube each month So guys, now we are aware that data is now generated in varieties of types and different varieties. We must have, now this is the time when we must have a generalized system that can handle all the types of data. We can't really rely on RDBMS which can only handle structured data. that's all about variety if I talk about veracity veracity is the minor V not that much big so guys veracity refers to the uncertainty in the data suppose we are collecting the data uh, if there are some ambiguities there are chances when the data is getting travel over the network there are chances of ambiguities there are chances of uh, latencies there are chances of noises in the data so veracity, veracity refers to uncertainty in the data might be we are getting today we are generating the reports and the data is a little old guys you will be surprising to hear that one in three business leader don't trust the information they use to make the decision that's really big that's really big and guys in today's era all the decisions are taken by the data by the insights that is captured by data poor data quality cost US economy around 3.1 trillion a year that's really big that's really big so guys I try to give you the complete uh, picture of big data these are the major V's of big data uh, just uh, to add it um, which is already added in this infographic by 2015 that's by the end of this year there will be 4.4 million IT jobs 4.4 million IT jobs will be created globally to support big data with 1.9 million in United States now let's talk about let's talk about conventional approaches that we were using for the storage guys I'm giving a very general case like we were using RDBMS, Oracle, DB2, MySQL etc and for unstructured data usually we store that in OS file systems and for the processing we have SQL queries for the structured data that is in RDBMS and for OS file system we usually have custom framework usually people process their data, parse their data in Perl Perl is the preferable choice for parsing and lower level control usually people want they develop their frameworks in C for the fast performance surely there are other conventional ways like uh, mainframes if you take any technology if you take like all are getting obsolete by the way guys I'm sure all of you are aware people are running mainframe elimination projects Sears is running mainframe elimination project and Fee is running mainframe elimination project. There are a number of different uh, players who are running the same. Now mainframe is getting replaced very fastly with the big data.
if I talk about the problems in this conventional approaches, guys, the conventional approaches which we talked, or you can add any other conventional approaches also, which was there uh, earlier in the industry. We started facing lots of issues with these conventional approaches. That's why, that's why there was a boom, there was a requirement, everybody was running behind big data like any thing. The very first issue, limited storage capacity. Guys, we can't store the data beyond some volume. When we have seen that we are generating the data in the range of petabytes, exabytes. And our DBMS is having pretty limited capacity, very limited storage capacity. Since it is deployed on single machine, single machine itself is having limited storage capacity. On the top of that, if I take the po most popular example, Oracle, it also is having limited capacity. So when I was uh, working with one of my client, a leading telecom operator, they need to archive their data again and again. They need to archive their old data again and again to handle the current data load. And from their client, they are keep, from their business, they are keep getting the requirement of the data that they have already archived. Limited processing capacity, guys. We cannot process large volumes of data efficiently since it is deployed on single machines. We have limited cores of CPUs. We have limited processing capacity. Guys, when I'll give you uh, just next section, only use case section for uh, a retail client. They were needing 10 hours to process their invoices daily. Just per day invoices, they are needing 10 hours to process. Let's take another example. Just giving you the issues, like so you can relate your own issues that oh, we in your org also you are facing these type of issues. I'm sure all of you are facing at least few of these issues. No scalability, guys. We can't scale our RDBMS. Like I can't add more machine in the RDBMS on the fly. I can't add more resources, more CPU on the fly in my RDBMS. That's not feasible, that's not possible. Single point of failure. If machine goes down, suppose the machine on which your RDBMS is running, if it goes down, you need to wait until they become up again. Sequential processing. Since it uses single machine, we can't get true pile processing, guys. Ultimately, if it is working on single machine, say example Oracle, MySQL, it's a sequential. And if I sequentially process one petabyte of data, you can imagine number of days I'll be needing. Our DBMS can only handle structured data, just structured data guys. What about unstructured data? As we know, more than 80% of the data is unstructured today more than 80 percent data that is generated is unstructured or dbms cannot handle the same it requires pre-processing of data guys if you are getting that say for example data in the xmls if you are getting data in any format you need to use etl methodologies and pre-process this data before loading into the rdbms you can't load raw data as it is According to data scientists, data is in its richest form when it is in the raw form. But you can't really take, uh, you can't really store that raw data as is. Because guys, for data scientists to generate the patterns, for data scientists to do advanced analytics, advanced machine learnings, they need, they always need raw data. But here, you need to pre-process this data. If I talk about typical distributed system, now guys, till now I was talking about single machine systems, machines like, uh, systems like MySQL or Oracle or any other uh, RDBMS. If I give you the typical example of distributed system, programs run on each app servers. So guys, I am having SAN storage area network, I am having a storage server and application server. I'm having a storage server and application server. 
so guys programs run on app server all data the data is on SAN storage area network now understand before execution each server get the data from SAN all of them will get the data from SAN via the network now if I take the example of big data where I'm having petabytes of data is movement of petabytes of data feasible over the network surely not after execution each server writes the output back to the SAN again double movement of data so guys by the way you can note down a golden rule of the industry especially big data industry movement of data is prohibited if I show you the problems with the conventional systems there is huge dependencies on network there is huge bandwidth demands because my data is getting transfer getting travel over the network scaling up and down is not a smooth process guys it's very tricky in this type of distributed systems another very big issue partial failures are difficult to handle say for example you are running a job of 10 hours but at 9 hour 30 minute job failed you need to start from the scratch you need to start from the scratch again you will be needing next 10 hours and suppose again at 8th hour it failed it, it would be like an infinite loop because my business wants alert my business wants report by next day and if I keep running how I can answer such type of queries a lot of processing power is spent on transporting of data guys data synchronization is required during exchange data synchronization is required guys again a very important very very big issue till now guys I have given you lots of problems with and examples of big data that these these, these are the problems now the question is the question is what is the solution the question is what is the solution the solution of all these problems is big data Hadoop guys Hadoop is that much popular that it's synonymous to big data now instead of I take the name just Hadoop I'm taking big data Hadoop because uh, although there are a few other solutions of big data available in the market but more than 90 percent people even I can say more than 95 percent of the people are using Hadoop as the solution of big data let's quickly start what exactly is Hadoop guys now pretty interesting things that is till now I was just showing you the problems what exactly are the problems that this industry is facing companies like Google Facebook Yahoo till the small players from the big players like Walmart till very small players what exactly are the issues they, they, they were facing what exactly is the problem why exactly is the big data on the boom we talked about all such things now the solution how to solve big data problem guys the answer is Hadoop introduction to Hadoop Hadoop is an open source project from Apache Software Foundation guys now few points here you should understand you will ask me that oh it's open source usually industries don't accept open source solutions so guys this is a very old story now P industry is accepting open source solutions like anything Hadoop is the first project that has been accepted by all the domains all the companies even Microsoft the big provider of proprietary solution have done the partnership with Yahoo to make Hadoop compatible with Windows and still you'll ask me no 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 I want commercial version so guys commercial version of the same is available uh, Hadoop is uh, available from IBM from uh, Cloudera from uh, Hortonworks that's Yahoo company from uh, EMC's uh, Pivotal so that's available from all of them but guys there's a beauty regard behind open source nature guys it opens a door for the researchers that they can change the code according to their requirements without any licensing issues like recently when we were working with the our client 
we were facing a issue that certain requirement certain requirement was not fulfilled by hadoop what we did we simply downloaded the source code we simply downloaded the source code and changed according to our requirements that's it hadoop provides an hadoop provides software framework for distributing and running for distributing and running applications on cluster of servers guys very important point the first point you should understand is cluster okay can anyone tell me what is cluster can anyone tell me what is cluster correct group of machines very good correct multiple machines correct multiple machines connected together all, all of you guys are correct so guys multiple machines connected together I can call a cluster that I can call as a cluster so guys Hadoop works on cluster it means Hadoop works on multiple machines together Hadoop works parallelly on hundreds or even thousands of machines the biggest cluster that has been tested it for is 14,000 nodes 14,000 machines in single cluster so how exactly cluster looks like I'll show you guys in just next few slides only so guys it distributes the data it distributes the work it distributes the applications between cluster between multiple machines now guys let's talk about the history uh, it's inspired by Google's map reduce programming model as well as file system as we know Google is the mother of all the inventions so Google has written a white paper that uh, what technologies it's using from early 2000s and uh, duck cutting and his team was working at Apache software foundation so they were working on nudge search engine they were working on nudge search engine project and uh, they got similar requirement of handling huge volumes of data uh, that uh, should be handled distributedly so they started developing Hadoop as the sub project Hadoop was merely sub project of nudge but soon due to the power and popularity guys Hadoop became the top level project Hadoop became the top level project by the way guys I'm getting few questions uh, please hold your questions just uh, I'll be needing another uh, 30 minutes after that we will take all your questions towards the end of session we will take all your questions so guys Hadoop at its initial state only when Hadoop was not even in alpha Hadoop defeated supercomputer Hadoop defeated supercomputer in a specific application guys uh, for uh, Terasort that's why Hadoop came into the limelight and companies like Yahoo companies like Facebook IBM Cloudera they have invested so much in Hadoop most of the Hadoop code is contributed by the top-notch talent of the industry that is from Facebook Yahoo IBM Cloudera like this so guys Hadoop an open source framework written in Java Hadoop is completely written in Java but it doesn't mean that you can code in other language you can code in other language you can code in other languages other than Java as well that is you can code in C, C++, Perl, Python, Groovy, Ruby etc but but there is a star mark condition supply uh, guys Hadoop's streaming APIs using which you can work on other languages it's not recommended why because you won't get the lower level control you won't get the all the APIs that's why guys it is recommended to code in Java you must code in Java for Hadoop Hadoop efficiently process large volumes of data on cluster of commodity hardware guys Hadoop is developed for the large volumes if you have small data like in the range of MBs or few GBs don't go for Hadoop but if you're having volumes yes Hadoop can handle the volumes on the cluster guys pretty efficiently it can handle the volumes on cluster of commodity hardware now guys it's really very important 
commodity hardware can anyone tell me what is commodity hardware what is commodity hardware correct cheap machines <laughs> very small answer but yes correct uh, like guys uh, low end machines the machines which we use for our day to day purpose like i3 machines i5 machines 4 core machines 8 core machines the uh, hadoop can be deployed in production on these machines yahoo has deployed 54000 machines guys although this figure is little old now more than a year old yahoo has deployed more than 54000 machines for hadoop and most of them are commodity machines but guys uh, you'll be surprised to hear that this is not the world's biggest cluster Facebook is having world's biggest Hadoop clusters. Now, guys, till now I was saying you that Hadoop works on cluster. Cluster means multiple machines, parallelly, distributedly, quite efficiently it can process the data. Now you'll ask me if I want to learn, do I need to purchase 100 machines? No. Hadoop can be set up on single machine. So guys, for our learning, R&D, testing, development, for all such purpose we usually use single machine, single node cluster. It is called single node cluster where we can set up Hadoop on single machine where all the work will be done by single machine because we are learning, we are testing. But, but real power of Hadoop comes with a cluster of machines. Real power of Hadoop comes with a cluster of machines. Now you'll ask me that if today I'm having just one machine to, tomorrow can I make it a cluster? Yes guys, Hadoop can be scaled from single machine to thousands of nodes. Hadoop can be scaled from single machine to thousands of nodes on the fly. On the fly without any downtime. Very important point guys. Without any downtime, we can scale our cluster. We can scale our cluster to thousands of machines. We can keep adding machines in real time without any downtime. Now, here starts Hadoop's components. Hadoop consists of two key parts. Hadoop consists of two key parts. First is the HDFS, that is Hadoop Distributed File System. HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System that is the storage layer of Hadoop. HDFS is the storage layer of Hadoop. We'll, we'll discuss HDFS is also in little details. Then MapReduce. MapReduce the processing layer of Hadoop. MapReduce the heart of Hadoop. Okay. So guys before discussing the architecture of Hadoop let's talk about why Hadoop. Let's talk about why Hadoop, why only Hadoop, what are the capabilities of Hadoop, why exactly Hadoop is that much popular, why people, everybody is accepting Hadoop. Guys, later point of time when I'll show you the list of companies who are working on big data Hadoop, you'll be surprised almost all the companies are working on the same. Apache Hadoop is a platform for data storage as well as processing guys Hadoop provides you two layers first is the storage layer second is the processing layer it is pretty much scalable scalable guys I'm sure all of you guys can recall the issues that we were facing with the conventional technologies like limited storage capacity, limited processing capabilities, uh, uh, limited uh, processing capacity, uh, single point of storage, single point of failure, all such type of issues guys. Just from the design principle, just from this architecture guys, all the issues will be resolved. Guys, if you recall, all the issues here, just from these three slides, if you recall, all the issues has been resolved with the Hadoop's architecture. So guys, Hadoop is scalable. You can add as many as node on the fly as you want. It's pretty much fault tolerant. That is, if machines fail, if say for example, uh, your few machine goes down, they crashes, the, uh, the machines are directly 
um, powered off then also you won't lose data the data will be highly available you won't be having any issue of data loss open source guys open source again a very uh, good point for Hadoop that saves you against vendor lock say you can take the uh, Hadoop directly from Apache open source and you can purchase you can purchase the support from any vendor if you don't like that vendor support you can change that so guys Hadoop has the flexibility to store and mine any type of data guys Hadoop can handle structured semi structured and unstructured data all the types of data if you recall RDBMS can handle only structured data you can ask the questions across structured to unstructured data that were previously impossible to ask or solve Hadoop is not bounded by single schema guys you will be surprised that Hadoop's storage mechanism is not bounded by any schema you can simply create directory and you can store data like in the Linux you create the directory in the same manner you can create directory and you can store any type of data you want to store say for example structured data yes you can do you want to store XMLs you can store if you want to store videos you can store if you want to store your Facebook uh, or Twitter's data that is tweets or posts you can store the same Hadoop excels processing complex data Hadoop excels processing complex data guys its scale out architecture divides workloads across multiple nodes its flexible file system eliminates ETL bottlenecks you don't need to transform the data you need don't need to convert data from its one format to another Hadoop scales economically Hadoop can be deployed on even commodity hardware guys uh, you will be surprised to listen that uh, for conventional technologies if you take the example of Oracle we need a specialized hardware high-end machines biggest machine that I have seen is 500 gigs of RAMs 128 cores of processor in single machine that machine is very costly a specialized machine but Hadoop can be deployed on commodity hardware open source platform guards against vendor lock so guys if I again show you the two core components of Hadoop HDFS that is Hadoop distributed file system that is distributed storage and data protection across physical servers plus MapReduce that is distributed computing across physical servers we have two layers now guys let's look at the basic architecture of Hadoop basic architecture of Hadoop Hadoop doesn't work on single machine it works on cluster we have master and slave architecture guys Hadoop works in master slave fashion yes you are correct guys master doesn't do any work master doesn't do any work instead of that it takes the work from the slave it assign work to the slave slaves are actual worker nodes slaves are actual worker nodes so guys if user want to do any work if user want to perform any task if user want to do any work user will submit the same work user will submit the same work to the master user will submit same work to the master master in turn divide that work and submit it to all the slaves guys look at this all the slaves in the cluster are doing the sub work so suppose if I have hundred slaves one hundredth of work will be done by each and every slave my speed processing speed will be hundred times faster so guys if I give you analogy say for example one person building a home example of Oracle versus hundred persons building a home example of Hadoop surely it would be hundred times faster
it would be and even when we'll see the actual in, uh, internals uh, internal architecture at that time we'll see it's more than 100 times fast because on each and every machine single machine also will do parallel processing All of you guys, before I proceed ahead, is this architecture clear? If I can get a smiley, then we'll proceed ahead with HDFS. HDFS, that is the storage layer of a dupe. Okay, that's great. Introduction to HDFS introduction to HDFS that is guys HDFS Hadoop distributed file system it's a distributed file system designed to run on commodity hardware it's designed to run on commodity hardware guys recent studies reveal that today more than 60% of world's data reside in Hadoop in HDFS. World's highest data is stored in any system. That's HDFS. HDFS accepted worldwide as world's most reliable data storage system. It's highly fault tolerant. It's highly fault tolerant, distributed, reliable and scalable file system for data storage. Guys, fault tolerant means failure of the machine won't cause any issue. Distributed, our data will be stored distributedly on multiple machines. Reliable, you won't be having any issue of data loss. It's pretty much reliable. scalable guys scalability what we discussed we can add more machines on the fly in our cluster so again I'm getting few questions I'll, I'll take your questions guys surely just towards the end of the session developed to handle huge volumes of data it's developed to handle huge volumes of data that is very large file size in the range of GB's to TB's now guys look at the storage mechanism of Hadoop last two points very important a file is split up into blocks a file is split up into blocks and stored distributedly across multiple machines guys your data is not stored as it is suppose you are having a file of size 100 TB this file is divided into smaller blocks of 64 MB and these blocks will be stored on all the machines in the cluster Apart from that, Hadoop stores multiple copies of data on different nodes so that in case of any node goes down, we will be having data available from other nodes. Okay, since it's very important, let me explain the, you the same with an animation. So guys, on the right hand side, you can see the same Hadoop cluster what we have seen earlier. Hadoop cluster where we have masters and slaves and this is a very large file, 100 TB in size. I want to store this large file on this Hadoop cluster. I want to store this large file on my Hadoop cluster. Guys, how exactly the file will be stored? Look at this. Firstly, the file will be splitted. Firstly, the file will be splitted into smaller blocks. You can see block 1, block 2, block 3, block 4 and so on. Again, I'll show you this is my actual file this is my actual file this file will be divided into smaller blocks block 1 block 2 block 3 block 4 and so on and these blocks these blocks are stored guys look at it these blocks are stored across the cluster like this block 1 went here block 2 
here, block 3 here, block 4 here and so on. So you can understand guys for 100 TB file size I'll be having thousands of blocks. Block size is 64 MB, merely 64 MB. Now, now, guys you can ask me that at any point of time if a machine goes down how my data will be available, how my data is highly available. So guys, my data is, my data is replicated, look at this. Block 1 is available on multiple locations, three locations. By default is three location. Block 1 available here as well as here as well as here. So at any point of time suppose this machine goes down. No issues. I can access my block 1 either from here or from this node. Hence guys the data is pretty much secure. The data is pretty much secure on Hadoop cluster. Now you'll ask me that uh, if all three nodes goes down, no issues guys, you can plan failure of nodes in advance. How? You can increase the replication factor. Like suppose uh, you, you want to handle three nodes failure at any point of time, you can make replication factor to four. Now guys, let's talk about the MapReduce, the heart of Hadoop. MapReduce, the programming model, designed for processing large volumes of data in parallel. Guys, it's designed to process huge volumes, volumes in the range of petabytes. It processes the data in parallel. It processes data in parallel by dividing the work, it divides the work into set of independent tasks. It divides the work into small tasks. Like guys, the example what I have shown to you. Work is divided into smaller, smaller pieces. Map reduce is the heart of Hadoop. Guys, very important point. It moves computation close to the data. Hadoop doesn't move data. Hadoop doesn't move the data. Instead of that, Hadoop moves computation. That is your algorithm. That is your code. Guys, you can understand code algorithm will be of hardly few KBs. Movement of KBs of data pretty much accepted as compared to movement of petabytes of data. This programming paradigm allows for massive scalability across hundreds or thousands of servers in Hadoop cluster. Guys, we can have hundreds, even thousands of clusters. Now guys, understand the map reduce processing with the help of this animation. So previously we have seen we have stored the data like block 1 here, block 2 here, block 3 here, block 4 here on the Hadoop cluster. Now user want to process this data. User have developed an algorithm. This is a map reduce algorithm, map reduce job. User want to process this data. How to process this data? Guys look at the innovative way that Hadoop has bring. Map reduce job will be submitted on the master. User will submit his work to the master. User will submit his job to the master. Now what master do? Instead of calling the data, instead of data movement, master send this algorithm, send this algorithm to all the slaves. Look at it. Guys, my map reduce job, my algorithm came here to process block 1. My algorithm came here to process block 2. My algorithm came here to process block 3. So, I'll be processing 
my block one on the slave where it is stored I'll be processing this part on the slave where it is stored so guys wherever the data is available on the same machine data will be processed on the same machine data will be processed that's called data locality it's very important point important concept how Hadoop works okay like guys let me summarize these two processing mechanism how exactly Hadoop works guys input data is broken down into smaller chunks that is by default 64 MB or we can increase it to 128 MB and then blocks are moved on to different nodes once all the blocks are stored on the data nodes user can process the data user can submit the work on the master that will be submitted ultimately to individual machines once all the data is processed output is written back on HDFS the same manner the same processing what I have already told you in previous section so guys that's it about Hadoop a small introduction a small um, concepts of Hadoop I have given to you now let's talk about the Hadoop ecosystem we have talked about uh, HDFS that is the storage layer HDFS Hadoop distributed file system Hadoop map reduce that is the processing layer these two we have talked now let's talk about yarn guys yarn is the cluster resource management that is yet another resource negotiator we can process or uh, we can uh, handle all the resource requests via yarn yarn takes care of resource management now uh, to code in uh, to work with map reduce you need to code in Java but now you'll ask me I am from SQL background and I don't want to learn Java uh, so what is there anything for me I would say yes guys there is hive hive with the help of hive you can submit SQL queries directly you can submit SQL queries in hive hive will convert SQL queries into map reduce job now you'll say ask me I'm from scripting background what is there for me in Java guys you have pig so you can submit your scripts in pig and pig will convert those scripts into map reduce job for ATL guys we have got flume and scoop flume for the collection of data from anywhere from different files from different processes from different clients you can collect the data and write to HDFS scoop for data transferred between RDBMS that is SQL to Hadoop that's called scoop now regarding again for the ETL for if you want to manage the workflows we have got Uzi so we can manage our workflows using Uzi what about NoSQL NoSQL is again on the boom so for the NoSQL guys we have HBase Apache HBase that can handle data in the range of petabytes even thousands of petabytes and and the response time the response time will be merely fraction of seconds guys important point if you store same data in Oracle by the way Oracle can't handle that much volumes but suppose let's take an assumption that suppose we store huge volumes in Oracle and when we query the data Oracle takes days to give you the results on the other hand HBase will give you results in merely few milliseconds not even a second that's the beauty of distributed NoSQL database so guys that's it about uh, Hadoop ecosystem now I'll quickly discuss real life use cases big data use cases these are guys real life case studies on few of which I have personally worked so this is most critical uh, section guys you should uh, relate your work also with this if you are facing similar type of issues credit card fraud detection okay let me give you a problem statement guys a U US national bank which has a revenue of 10 billion dollars is losing about 2 percent of its revenue that is 20 million dollars due to fraudulent card transactions what is the objective identify whether the requested transaction is 
fraudulent or not so guys to identify the potential fraud in transactions it's very challenging as time needed to complete the transaction is merely few seconds so guys data needs to be processed in real time because the velocity is very high we need a methodology that is the IM data in motion analytics while data is traveling we need to process the data using in memory tools using big data tools we have discussed credit card fraud detection in great details now let's talk about another use case that is sentiment analysis so guys the objective is to identify the orientation of opinion orientation of opinion in a piece of text like blogs user comments review websites community websites social media sites what people are writing about me so guys sentiment analysis provides substance behind the social data I am very much interested say being a business owner I am very much interested what people are thinking about me whether they are liking me or not it processes language it processes users language and understands consumer feeling it understands consumer feeling and attitudes towards brands or topic in a online conversation so guys suppose um, a specific uh, mobile phone is launched suppose a Samsung Galaxy S5 is launched now what people are thinking whether they, whether they are liking it or not what exactly they are liking what exactly they are not liking based on the same for the same we can do the sentiment analysis so guys uh, similarly here if we have if a company is launching a new product using sentiment analysis we can identify users opinion about the same now based on users opinion product can be improved how say for example today I'm launching launching a product and 70 percent people are saying negative about that it means there is something very big issue some very big issues are there something big is missing so guys I can take early decision it enables business to take the early decision how because by today UD only when today I'm launching the product today end of the day I'll receive the sentiment analysis reports rather than rather than wait for sales report guys you know sales reports might take six to eight months over across the globe from across the globe if I want to analyze my sales it needs around six months six months is a, a, a standard time but during this six months thousands or millions of pieces of my product will be manufactured that would be big loss for me but using sentiment analysis I can take early decision I can say for example today EOD I'll get the reports oh people are not liking this particular feature of my cell phone people are saying that oh this main feature is missing from your cell phone I can stop the production immediately and I can take the corrective measures now few important use cases guys from the perspective of data my uh, leading retail client in India they are getting 100 GB of invoice data daily although 100 GB of invoice data I can't really say it's huge but in this case processing is very complex invoice data needs to be transformed into structured format which involves validation verification and complex business rule implementation so guys the problem here is legacy systems are incapable of processing the data in optimum time period so guys I have personally worked on this particular project uh, so when we visited our client they were using conventional approaches they are having their parsing in C and Perl and uh, the time taken to process the data was 10 hours at 3 a.m. in the morning they are getting the data they need another 10 hours to process that data that's really very huge 
the requirement that I got was if I can reduce this time to 5 hours if I can reduce this time to 5 hours because business need early alerts at 8 in the morning business want an alert like just a message like what was the sales yesterday like what was the sales in a specific region in a specific store overall the um, region wise overall India state wise country wise I, I want overall sales uh, alerts but which was impossible using their conventional approach so guys we developed a solution in big data we developed our solution in Hadoop in map reduce pure map reduce the time taken to process the data was merely 10 minutes over a cluster of 10 nodes guys yes the time reduced from 10 hours to 10 minutes it's really very huge very big achievement of big data <laughs> I'm getting lots of smileys wows yes guys it was really a wow application wow thing so we got uh, lots of uh, applause from our client for this and uh, we got several projects after this anyways uh, let's take another use case that Sears Holdings guys Sears has 4000 stores with millions of products and 100 million customers that has collected over 2 petabytes of data so far now understand it's a very interesting problem the problem was legacy systems are incapable of analyzing their data what exactly was the issue they want to um, personalize their marketing and loyalty campaigns they want to personalize their marketing and loyalty campaigns conventional approach for analyzing the data guys what they were using by the way this this I haven't worked on this this case study is available on Google as well the same they have analyzed 10% of customer data for personalizing loyalty and marketing campaigns on mainframe teradata and SS processing time for analyzing 10% of data was six weeks that's really huge you can imagine for hundred percent of the data it would be 60 weeks more than a year to analyze the data on mainframe teradata and SS it's taking one year more than a year and what will happen the data of that year they are facing huge issues so guys what Sears has done Sears has started with the big data they have shifted to Hadoop with 300 nodes commodity servers 300 nodes commodity servers time taken to process 100% of customers data is merely one week now guys 10% 6 weeks 100% one week look at the difference look at the difference interactive reports can be developed in three days instead of six to twelve weeks guys six to twelve weeks to directly three days it saved millions of dollars in mainframe and RDBMS cost and got five thousand percent better performance look at the performance percentage it increased the revenues through better analyze, analysis of customer data so guys uh, just uh, that's it about the use cases just a uh, last slide for the use case so IT infrastructure optimization guys uh, cloud computing companies like Amazon like Rackspace they are running lots of uh, big data project to optimize the infrastructure to prove that cloud is much more cheap than your on-premise systems advertising analysis so guys regarding advertisements you are aware that earlier it was uh, like broadcasting our advertisements now advertisements has been changed to unicast to specialized to especially intended audience like uh, whoever is liking uh, whoever is needing I'll show my advertisement to that that's highly content driven 
I am sure guys you have uh, observed the same in Google advertisements. Predictive analysis. What will happen? What will happen? Like uh, earlier guys we were answered we were able to answer the questions like what has happened like what was my sales last year what was my sales last six years last six months last Diwali last Christmas but now I can answer the questions what will be my sales what will be my sales next Diwali what will be my sales next year next six months and business can take early decisions Customer churn analysis. Guys, biggest issue of the customer facing industry, whether that is a banking, financial domain, whether that is a retail domain, whether that is telecom domain. Everybody is facing this issue that if a customer is leaving me, why? So there are billions of com customer complaints that is analyzed and the solution is provided by the way when we work with a telecom operator we have given him the top 10 reasons why people are leaving you Aadhaar project by government of India guys all your fingerprints retina scan everything that is stored in big data weather forecasting earlier guys we were like uh, government of India if we take the example earlier it was like uh, when there is any cyclone when there is any natural calamity, calamity we came to know once it hit us but today we are able to process the data we can analyze the weather and we can focus like Vishak at Vishakhapatnam Hudhud will attack at this place at this point of time that's why government has taken all the preventive action all the preventive measures what will happen accordingly we have processed all our data we have taken all the preventive measures healthcare analysis guys in the healthcare also there is huge uh, applications are going for the big data like uh, cancer analysis like cancer reports are getting analyzed and uh, the algorithm is predicting the best therapy for that uh, patient natural resource exploration again very important um, uh, application guys uh, say the companies like Reliance who is uh, doing uh, uh, resource exploration so based on the output from our uh, applications they can find out okay on this particular location we will get the natural resources there are lots of for this this is more towards the statistical and machine learning but yeah a big data application so guys uh, that's it about uh, big data that's it about Hadoop now let's talk about future and careers of big data and Hadoop so guys global Hadoop market size and focus from 2013 to 2020 Hadoop market will reach 50 billion dollars in 2020 with a compound annual growth rate of 58.2 percent that's huge compound annual growth rate guys 58.2 percent if we talk about global Hadoop software market by types application software package software performance monitoring management software by service by types consulting services Hadoop training and outsourcing service integration and deployment middleware service via hardware storage market server market network and equipment by end users guys almost all the end users are using this manufacturing BFSI uh, retail telecom healthcare government media trade IT hospital ID so on Hadoop market dynamics guys drivers cost effective and fast processing large volumes of unstructured data and increasing demand for data analytics and so on so guys uh, if I give you a few more insights IDC forecast suggests that big data technology and service market will grow at 40 percent a year which is seven times the 
estimated growth rate of overall IT and communication business. Guys, seven times than overall market, Hadoop is growing. Another research suggests that by 2016, more than 75% of the data on the planet will be residing in Hadoop. So guys, CIO Insights, again a big data uh, magazine, a resource provider. Big data is big time important for enterprise. A whooping 80% of the company says big data is important to their ongoing business operations. 80% have accepted with 43% saying that it's mission critical because of lack of Hadoop talent. There is a huge shortage of Hadoop talent in the market. So guys, big data and market trends and prediction if I give you guys, we'll be having 40 zettabytes of digital universe by 2020. The US has one of the three, one, th oh sorry, one third of world's data. 65% analytics apps with Hadoop inside by 2015. Big data is one of five US GDP game changer according to McKinsey. 15 times growth rate of machine generated data by 2020. Guys, that's really huge. That's huge. So guys, if we look at the Google trend, guys, this red one is for the big data, blue one is for Hadoop. Hadoop and big data is growing exponentially up, up and up. On the other hand, this yellow one for ETL, it's going down. Green one for data warehousing, it's also going down. Hadoop is booming, Hadoop is going up, the requirements as well as market is going up and other technologies are going down like anything. The same uh, if I talk about the companies hiring or using Hadoop guys, IT companies like Infosys, Accenture, IBM, TCS, Wipro, Cognizant, HCL, it's an unending list by the way. Analytics outsources like Mu Sigma, Fractal, Absolute Data, Latin View, Genpact, Retailers, Reliance, Walmart, Sears, Tesco, Consultants, PwC, KPMG, Deloitte, McKinsey. Financial domain. So guys, in the financial domain, Citibank, all the banks, I can say, Citibanks, SBI, HSBC, ICICI, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan. Telecom domain, Airtel, Reliance, Vodafone, AT&T, IDR, TTSL, Nokia, Healthcare, Novartis, Dr. Reddy's, Renbexi, Sipla, E-commerce, Amazon, PayPal, Flipkart, Snapdeal. It's an unending list, guys. Almost all of them are using the same. So if I give you guys careers, prospects, and big data and Hadoop, the very first job role is Hadoop architect, whose job function is to design, manage, and provide end-to-end -end big data solution. The skills required for him is HDFS, MapReduce, Hive, HBase, Pig, Uzi, Scoop, Plume, Java. All these skills for an architect, all these skills are always required. And experience layer is uh, about 10 to 12 years. And guys, there are a few junior job roles are also available like Hadoop developers who will develop MapReduce jobs. A skills required for him is MapReduce, HDFS, Hive, Java. And he should have the basic knowledge of the ecosystem. This edge based figures he are the ecosystem. Experience level required is 0 to 5 years. Regarding Hadoop admin, we manage Hadoop cluster, monitor Hadoop cluster, maintain Hadoop cluster, deploy Hadoop cluster. So the skills, main skills required is Hadoop, Linux, network management and hardware skills and experience required is 0 to 5 years. Uh, guys, regarding Hadoop analyst, they analyze large amounts of data and brings the insights. The main skill required for him is SQL and Hive and experience level is 0 to 5 years. So guys, if you look at the job trend, Hadoop job trend is going up, up, and look at this, it's it's almost an exponentially up. It's going quite fastly, it's from Indeed. So job trend is going very up, market is very positive for Hadoop.
particular course you will become employable in big data industry you will gain practical insights practical skills which employer need rather than theoretical knowledge guys remember we are not having any freelancers available with us like people who are working in real industry who has spent around 15 years in the industry only those trainers we are hiring and they are parallelly working on the in the leading industries leading companies so you'll be working on POCs and live project during the course and you can update your CVs also you can get the job assistance so guys uh, now the platform is open for uh, questions